Good afternoon. Hi, welcome everyone. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that we already have a great group of people watching and ready to be part of this workshop. We'll get started in just one minute at four o'clock. I'm really glad that you're here with us. My name is Christina. I work for San Francisco Public Library and we'd love to know where you're tuning in from. So can you just let us know where you're from? Put it in the chat. It's really great for us to know um, where folks are connecting from. Awesome. Well, we're going to get started right now. It's four o'clock. First off, we have a trailer for you to see of our new Make and Do series, and I'll be back to say a few more things right after that. So if you're just tuning in right now, my name is Christina and I'm the Family Engagement Coordinator at San Francisco Public Library. I love my job because I get to connect with artists and makers, bring them here for you. And today we have Book Arts Roadshow. This is number five of our special winter series. Every Monday at four o'clock, we have a different book arts project. And today's project is Happy Pocket Books. I know for me, it is definitely a time when I could use any more happiness. So Happy Pocketbooks is coming up real soon. You can see the full schedule of the rest of our uh, make and do programs with Book Arts Roadshow in the chat, as well as a project list, supply list, and um, check out our calendar, our program calendar at sfpl.org. That's where you can see everything. So like I mentioned, this is part of our Make and Do series, which is really your place for craft and maker programs for school-age kids and their families. So wherever you're tuning in from, I see we've got Cupertino, Davis, Alameda, and San Francisco in the house. Welcome, everyone. Please uh, make sure to bookmark and check out our webpage for Make and Do programs. That's at sfpl.org forward slash make hyphen do. We've got calendar listings there, downloadable activity sheets, book lists, and more. So before I get started, I just have to thank the friends of the San Francisco Public Library. They generously support this program and all of our programs that we have at the library. We just couldn't do it without them. So without further ado, let me bring my on my friends from Book Arts Roadshow, co-founded by Cheryl Ball and C.K. Itamora, they provide book arts instruction and hands-on learning experiences for children, teens, and grown-ups. And they are just so much fun. I know you're going to have a blast today. Take it away, Book Arts Roadshow. Hi, thanks, Christina. Welcome, everybody. This Welcome. is number five. It's so nice to see you back again. And if you haven't um, tuned in to any of the previous four episodes, be sure to go to the uh, San Francisco Public Library's YouTube channel. And if you go to the little magnifying glass um, icon, um, that's, you can type in Book Arts Roadshow and then click the little icon and do a search. And all the Book Arts Roadshow videos that we've done for the San Francisco Public Library will magically pop up on your screen and you could watch all of them. Um, just to let you know, some of the things that you'll find there are that we did um, this expandable um, book last week. We've done some notebooks and journals um, that you can use as recipe books. Um, we've done these other books that you can use as uh, art photo scrapbooks. So be sure to check those other videos out and we'll get started on today's project. So today's project um, is something that we call a happy pocket book. So here's what a happy pocket book looks like. It, it um, has a little ribbon around it. You can tie it closed and, um, and then you can untie it and expand it. And it's really fun because you can put messages um, inside the pockets. You can put 
little drawings inside the pockets and you can write notes inside the pockets as well. And in addition to it, it actually being a book that has pages like that, you can also use it as decoration. So you could put it up somewhere at home on a shelf and look at all your artwork in your pockets too. Um, and it's small, so you can actually put it in your pocket too and carry it around with you wherever you go. So let's get started with that. Um, what you'll need for today. The first thing you'll need is some sheets of paper. Um, these are just eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper that we're using today. So it's the type of paper that we just pull out of our little printers that we have at home. Um, but if you have plain paper, that's great. If you are not using plain paper, um, you can use paper that you've drawn on before. You can also use paper bags from the grocery store and cut those into um, the pieces that we need for today as well. So, um, oh, I forgot. And if you happen to have at home some pieces of origami paper, those come in handy too, because um, the square shape of the origami paper is what we're gonna be using for today's session. So let's see. Let's get started. So um, we're the Book Arts Roadshow. I'm Cheryl, and um, this is I'm, I'm Cheryl in the wrong direction. I think, yeah, Cheryl Ball, <laughs> and um, together we're the Book Arts Roadshow, and we normally travel around to different places around the San Francisco Bay Area and teach people how to make books in person. But now we're doing it on Zoom for the time being, and um, we're glad you joined us. Um, so Cheryl, do you have anything to add to all the stuff that I've been blabbing on about? <laughs> um, just welcome everybody. And what we're going to be doing is Cheryl CK is going to be giving the directions and you'll be seeing my hands on the screen shortly. So enjoy. Great, super, thank you. So we're going to start with paper, as I mentioned. We also need a pair of scissors. So grab those. Um, if you have a glue stick handy, we're gonna need that today as well to glue some things together. Um, and also if you have a string uh, or a piece of ribbon, like this kind of ribbon or this kind of ribbon or even an old shoelace works. Or from whatever. the pastry boxes. <laughs> Oh, pastry boxes. I like the sound of that. So whatever type of string or ribbon you have, we'll use that today as well. And then also, um, um, so that you can decorate your book later, you can, if you have some colored pencils or markers handy, um, those will come in handy. And then um, at the end of this video, I'll show you what I put in my pockets of my pocketbooks oh. when I make them. Oh, you know, yes, yeah, spoon. If you happen to have a spoon handy, I know it seems like a really um, odd thing for a um, book making video, but um, we actually use a wooden spoon or metal spoon in uh, making books. So if you happen to have one, grab it. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, but it comes in handy. Even though this is not a cooking show, uh, we often use these wooden spoons. Okay, so first things first, let's get Cheryl on the overhead so we can, she can demonstrate how the steps go. So she'll be making the book right along with you. Okay. Great, there you are. Super. So the first thing that we're gonna start with is our sheets of paper. So let's grab um, some sheets of paper and um, the first task at hand is we need to make the sheets of paper into squares. So here, here's Cheryl and she's got a piece of paper. So what we're gonna do is an easy way you can make a rectangle people, piece of paper into a square is just by taking one corner and bringing it down to the edge, then kind of matching up the, the bottom edge of the paper so it lines up and then go ahead and fold it down. 
Whoop. And then we're going to take, let's see, this, there's an extra long rectangle on the side. And we're going to fold that over like that. And make a crease. Oh, that looks like a sailboat sort of on the bay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that. We're gonna do this to all six sheets of paper that we're working with. And if you have six sheets of paper, you can do that to all six of your sheets right now too. And if you're working with a different number of papers, you can do that too, because um, one of the fun things about this book is you can use as many sheets of paper as you like. But it usually works best if you're using at least two sheets of paper. But today we're going to make one that has five sheets of paper. Each sheet of paper is going to make two pockets in our happy pocket book. So if we have two pockets per sheet of paper and we have five sheets of paper, two times five equals 10. And that means we're going to have 10 pockets in the book that we're making today. So Cheryl is on, I lost track, but I think she might be on paper number three. Great. And if you are keeping up with Cheryl, um, that's wonderful. And if it, if you need a little bit more time, don't worry about it because you can always pause this video and you can rewatch the video and pause it as many times as you need to to be able to watch the steps over and over and again. So don't worry about um, whether you're keeping up at the same speed as um, Cheryl's magic hands are right now. So I think she's on number five. Oh, yes, number five. Wonderful. So now you've got five little sailboat um, shaped pieces of paper but they're not gonna stay shaped like sailboats for very long because what the next thing we're gonna do is, is on each piece of paper, we're gonna open the rectangle flap and we're gonna open the triangle flap. And it might be a little bit hard to see, but when you open up all the papers, then there, is there's two creases. There's a crease that goes that way diagonally and there's another crease that goes that way, which is a perpendicular line. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut along the perpendicular line to cut the long rectangle off of all five sheets of paper. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one along with you while Cheryl's cutting hers too. So when you're finished, you'll have, you'll have a square piece of paper and you'll have a long rectangle piece of paper. And you're gonna go ahead and set those down and you're gonna do that to all five pieces. Now, if you are using paper that's already squares, because at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that if you have origami paper, you can use that. And origami paper is, I think, almost always a square. So you can skip this part that we're doing right now about cutting off the rectangle end because you're already ahead of us. You already have your squares. So you can just um, set those aside. Thank you for your patience. And as soon as we get done cutting the fifth one, then we'll move on to the next step. A lot of the steps in this book um, are a lot like origami. So if you um, know how to make some things um, using origami, like cranes or frogs or other animals. Um, some of these folds might already be familiar to you, but we're going to use origami type folds to make this book. 
And I think that might be Cheryl's last number five. Okay, so she's on number five. I'm not cutting very straight, but <laughs> it'll still work. Even if the lines aren't exactly straight when you're cutting them, it'll still work. So now you should have a bunch of these pieces of paper that are the long rectangles, which um, we're going to take one of them and we're going to set the other ones aside. So we're going to use one of these. And then from here, we're going to fold it in half. And then we're going to fold it in half again. And then after you folded it in half and folded it in half again, you're going to open it all back up again. So now your paper has three folds on it. One, two, three, and it has four squares. So what we're going to do next is we're going to cut on each of those lines so we have four small squares of paper. So let's cut those. Great. Super. So now we're going to take each of those four pieces of paper and let's see, let me find my, we're go, they're, they're, if, you're, if your rectangles are long one way and a little bit shorter the other way, I want you to turn it this way so that it's long going across and short going up like that. Great. And from there, we're going to go ahead and fold them in half like that. One, two, three, and four. Then next, you'll notice that on your little pieces of paper, one edge is folded and one edge is open like that. So we, what we want to do is we want to go from the side where the fold is. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on the edge where there's a fold and we're going to cut a little diagonal like that. Just a little bit and it, it doesn't need to be any particular angle. And then we're going to flip it upside down and we're going to do the same thing. This is the side that has the fold on it. And we're going to cut one more diagonal like that. So now my paper, when I open it up, is this shape. Like that. Perfect. So we're going to do that to, and if you guessed it, we're going to do it to all the other three pieces of paper. So go ahead and do that now. Now what these are going to be is these are going to be little hinges inside the book. So when I showed you the sample of the book before, all, all these sections have a little hinge inside like a hinge on a door that makes it open and close like that. So all these sections that attach the um, pages together are held together by these little hinges that you're making right now. So you're making little hinges. And Cheryl is, she's draw, she used her um, other, the ones that she cut already and she's using a little pencil to draw her lines so that her, her um, angles are all the same. They don't have to be all the same, but she's making them all match. <laughs> I was also just showing everybody how to cut them. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Great, so now we have four hinges. We're gonna call these our hinges. And 
Now we're going to set our hinges aside. So we're done with our hinges. And now we can actually set our scissors aside for a while because we're not going to need them for a while. Now we're going to bring up our four, five pieces or big squares that you cut. So right now, all your squares have a diagonal line on it. But you can kind of flatten that out because we're actually not going to need the diagonal line anymore. We only created that diagonal line in order to create the square to begin with. But now what we're going to do is ignore the diagonal line. And instead, we're going to do a, a fold and we're going to fold the paper halfway. So we're going to match up our corners. Matching up the corners here. And then we're going to crease the paper down the middle. And try and match up your corners as best you can because that will help the pages of the book be straight. But if they're not perfect, don't worry because the book will still work if it's not perfectly straight. But just try. Try to match up your corners when you're folding it in half as best you can like that so they match. And you're going to do that. And if you guessed, you're going to do it to all the other squares that you made. So if you made five like we did, we've got one down and four more to go. So let's do that. Now, of course, if you're using back to the origami paper, if you're using origami paper that's smaller, that's fine too, because this book can be made in all sorts of different sizes. So you can use little pieces of origami paper like this, or you can use even smaller pieces of origami paper like that. Or if you have even smaller paper, you could do that. Or if you wanted to use a big piece of paper, like, from a grocery bag and cut a square out of that. You could do that and you can make a big version of this book. So um, whatever size you feel like making them, um, they're all wonderful. Great. So now we have them all folded in half. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one sheet of paper to start with and we're gonna fold one edge into the center line. So right now you have a fold down the middle, a crease in the middle. We're gonna take this edge here and we're gonna fold it over into the center. Try to match up the edges to the center line, which is a lot easier when you're not doing it in the air like I'm doing and Cheryl's doing it on the desktop. So just go ahead and fold both sides in, and then you're gonna do that. Yes, you got it right on the other four sheets of paper. So you're gonna keep going until you got all four of your sheets of paper like that. Now, if you are using origami or you're using any kind of paper that is blank on one side or has color on the outside, then what you want to do is when you're folding it, you want to fold it so that the colors, after you fold it like that, so that the color of your paper is showing on the outside of your paper. So you, that's the direction you want to do it in, as opposed to this way, because if you fold it that way, then the pretty colors on your origami paper or your other kind of paper aren't gonna show on your book. So just make sure that when you're folding it, you're folding it so that the colors show on that side. If you're using paper that's already got color on it. 
And if you don't, don't worry about it because that's why we asked you to have some color markers or color pencils available because after we make the book is when you can decorate it. Great, so now we have that step done. Now we're gonna take one of the sheets that we just folded. So now it's kind of like doors or like French doors, right? So we're gonna take one of the sheets of paper that we folded and we're gonna open it up. And then now we have a fold, we have three folds. We have one here, we have one in the middle and we have one on the edge, right? So there's three of them in there. So we're gonna start with one on this side and we're gonna pay attention and we're going to basically take this, one of the corners and this edge and we're gonna fold it into like that. Cheryl's gonna draw so you can see it a little better because the lines are, the crease lines on the paper are a little difficult to see. But basically, you're gonna end up with something that looks like that. And, it, the, and the in your edge of your paper goes right up into that fold right there, right? So you're going to, when you're, what you're going to do is you're gonna do that on all four corners of your paper. So you're gonna turn it around this way and fold this corner in. I don't know if I'm doing a very good job in the air. I'm gonna put it down. Great. You're gonna do it to all four corners. And then once you've done that, you're gonna fold your French, French doors closed again, like this. Now this time, crease the creases really sharp on the edges. And this is where our little spoons come in handy because we usually, like what Cheryl's doing with her little wooden spoon is she's pressing down on the edges so that they are nice sharp creases. Great. And then, yes, you're going to do this to the other four sheets of paper. So we'll walk through those steps again. So we're going to take the sheet of paper, we're going to fold and make our French doors by folding in the two sides and then opening it up again and then taking one corner and folding it in. That's this part here, folding a corner, then doing it to the other corner and the other corner and the other corner. So go ahead and do that to all the sheets of paper. At this point, if you're using paper that's colored on one side or has some design or a drawing on one side, depending on what kind of paper you're using, then what it's going to look like when you are making one for you really quick right here. Well, while we're all watching Cheryl's hands. I think she might be on number three right now, but I kind of lost track of how many she's done already. She's on number three, great. So if you're using paper that has color on one side, then your corners are gonna look like this and then you're folding it in like that. And now your paper should look like this. It's got color on one side like that. Don't worry if you're not using colored paper because you're always going to get to decorate it at the end. This is number four. And now 
number five. <laughs> Yay. And again, we're making a book that we're using five sheets of paper. But if you want this book here, we used three colors, three pieces of paper. We used an orange sheet of paper, a pink sheet of paper, and a yellow sheet of paper to make this one. So this one was only a three sheet happy pocket book. The one we're making today is gonna have more pockets than this. It's gonna have five pockets. Super. So believe it or not, we're almost done. So now that we have all five of our French doors, the next step we're gonna do is we're going to flip it, take one and we're gonna flip it over And what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're going to divide this into thirds, roughly. So into three sections. So what we're gonna do is we're going to fold it over so that the, it looks about like that. And if it's not exactly into thirds, it's okay, because the book will still work. So we're gonna cut it, do it into thirds like this. So I'm just roughly making it fold that way. Now, if you want to be super precise, you're welcome to get a ruler out and measure the length of your paper and divide it by three and then go ahead and measure it into thirds and then fold it. But we're just kind of doing an eyeball. We're trusting our eyes right now into making them into thirds. So we're going to go ahead and Make them all into thirds like this. And we're gonna do that to all five pieces of paper. And if it's just, if, if, it's, if it's not exactly into thirds, it's fine, because it'll still work. So just roughly try and get it so that it folds into, three, into thirds. And once you do the first one, you can kind of use that as a guide for how much to fold it over. And then the second, third, and fourth, and fifth ones become really easy. So maybe you noticed that the first one that you did, it took a little bit of switching around and moving it around until you got into the thirds. But once you got the first one done, the rest of them were pretty easy. So Cheryl's on number four. She's got one more to go. I'm redoing my first one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great job. Let's see. Okay. All ready. Super. Great. So now your paper looks something like this, right? On one side, it's just like that. And on the other side, it looks like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make the pocket on the first piece of paper. And the way you do that is you take one edge of the paper, it doesn't matter which, because they're both the same right now. So you're gonna take one of them and you're gonna take the corner of one and you're gonna tuck it in side of the pocket of the other one. And then you're gonna take the top part and you're gonna tuck it in the top part. So we're going to do it 
again and again and again because we have five of them to do. So we're going to, there's a pocket here and there's a pocket here. So we're going to take the corner of this and we're going to tuck it inside the bottom pocket. And then we're going to take the top part and we're going to tuck it inside the top part like that and just kind of smooth it out. And then you should have something that has a nice little square in the middle of it like that. Super. And Cheryl is using her spoon and she's just kind of smashing down all the edges so that the creases are nice and sharp as she's doing it. This part, I know it's a little tricky to try and get the edges into the little corner pockets there, but it gets easier the more you do it. Just like with anything else, the more you practice, the easier it gets. And the spoon really helps. <laughs> and the spoon really helps. So if you want to take a moment to go grab a spoon out of the kitchen drawer, you can do that. We'll still or be here can, when you get back. <laughs> or you can use the back of your scissors as well. That's true. Or you can use, everyone's got a glue stick, I think, today. So you can use your glue stick to smash down um, the um, corners too. So like Cheryl, it was using her thumb sometimes. Now she's using the edge of her glue stick. So the side of the glue stick is great for smashing down the, the creases as well. And this is the last one. The last one. So number five. Super. That one went in really easy. Great. So now if everyone... Um, if you haven't um, smashed down all your edges yet and you want to just take a moment to smash down your edges to make them nice, um, you can do that. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you. So this was the original book that I demonstrated in the beginning that had the little pockets in it. So now this little thing that you've made is just like these little pockets, right? So it's just like it. So that fits right there. It's just one of them. So now what we have to do is we have to attach these. Oh, and by the way, you can fold them in half. So you can see that you just made one sheet of paper makes two pockets. And now what we're going to do is attach them together. You remember I mentioned that there's like a hinge that holds all of them together. So now we're, is when we're going to use those little hinges we made earlier. Remember these little pieces of paper that we cut earlier? Those are our hinges. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hinges and our glue stick, and it'll be helpful if you happen to have one more, I'm looking around for one more sheet of extra paper that's hanging around. Um, or a scrap piece of paper. Basically, we're just gonna put that on top of our desktop so that we don't get glue on our desktop. If you don't have an extra piece of paper, don't worry about it. You could just wipe up the desk afterward. But if you have one, it's helpful to put another piece of paper underneath um, when we're gluing so we don't get glue all over the desk. Oh my goodness, Cheryl, your screen is so bright. It's like neon, yeah, that's better. <laughs> Okay, that's great. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we have our little hinges. So grab your all your hinges. You should have four little hinges that you made. And we're going to, um, what we're going to do is we're going to flip them over. So see how all the hinges have like a little, I don't know if you could see my little hinge right here. There's like a, this is like a mountain. So there's like a peak of a mountain. This would be a valley because it's like a valley, but we're gonna put them up like this where there's a peak like a mountain. So you're gonna put them all on your desktop or your tabletop or wherever you're working. You're gonna put them up so that the mountain part is poking up. 
Super. So now we're going to grab our glue stick and we're going to glue one side of your hinge up until the crease. So you were just going to glue the, like we have our mountain side and we're going to put glue like that on just half of our mountain on one side. And then we're going to take one of our pockets, our set of pockets that we made. We're going to open it up like that. And we're going to glue it so that the, this is the front of the pockets and this side has glue on my hinge. I'm going to put it inside like that and up to the crease and I'm just going to pinch it. And so now I have half of the hinge inside my pocket. Great. Now this hinge, the other half of the hinge that's sticking out right now, we're going to put glue right there on that side of the, of the hinge. So we're just going to don't do it in the air like I'm doing it. Do like do it the way Cheryl's doing it. <laughs> It'll be easier than doing it in the air. So um, you're gonna put glue. So now there's glue on that part of the hinge. And now you're gonna get another set of pockets. You're gonna open up your, your pockets and then you're gonna put the hinge inside that one match it match up your pockets so that they're sort of even and then pinch it and now you've attached two sets of pockets together so now what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly attach the other ones together so we're going to put we have two more hinges to attach to the other three pieces and then we'll be done with the pockets. And the last thing to do is just to put the, the ribbon on it. So while Cheryl's doing that, I'm gonna just, um, you can go ahead and follow along with Cheryl cause she's gonna go ahead and do um, the rest of her hinges. And while she's doing that, I'm just gonna show you something um, because I said that I would. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that you can put little messages, little happy thoughts in your pockets, um, you, know, you could write little thought bubbles, you can draw something. But I mentioned that there's something that I really like to do with my pocketbooks. So here's a little tiny pocketbook I made. This is like a really small one. So I don't know if you could tell how small it is, but it's really small because I made it with small pieces of paper. But what I really like to do with mine in my pockets is I like to take my pocketbooks out when I go for a walk. And when I go for a walk, I usually collect leaves and I take my pocketbook and I find an interesting leaf and I put it in my pocketbook. And then I go for walking a little bit more and I find another leaf and I put another leaf in my pocketbook. And then I just keep adding interesting leaves to my pocketbook while I'm out for my walk like that. And then when I get home, I have a little book that has all these wonderful leaves that I collected along while I was out for my walk, getting some fresh air, and if it's a sunny day, some sunshine. And, um, oh, here's one more leaf. And I think Cheryl's almost done. Maybe we'll finish stuffing my pocketbook at the same time that she's gonna be done making the last hinge. And, oh, here's a maple leaf. And here's a red maple leaf. Great. So Cheryl's got all her hinges done. She's got her pocketbook. And now I have put leaves from one of my walks inside the pockets. But you can put anything you want inside your pocketbooks. So we'd love to see what you come up with. 
And Cheryl's going to attach the ribbon right now. Let's see. She's basically putting, taking her piece of ribbon. Putting glue on both sides of the ribbon. And then I'm just gonna open the pocket at one end and just stick the ribbon in. Ta-da! Great. And she's wrapping the ribbon around it so she can tie it closed so it'll stay closed while she's out on a walk or if you're leaving it on the shelf or putting it in your pocket. And then this little pocketbook that I made is going to close up like this with all the fun leaves sticking, oops, sticking out of it. And then when I open it up, I can put it on my shelf or on my desk or wherever I want. And it's decoration and it reminds me of my walk. So I think that's it. So I hope, we hope that you enjoyed making pocketbooks with us. Um, that's it for today. Uh, we hope you'll join us next week. Um, same time, same place. So Monday at four o'clock on the San Francisco Public Library YouTube channel. And next week, we're going to make something called a caterpillar book, which is kind of like a slinky, but it's a book. So make sure you tune in for that one. Thank you so much, Cheryl and CK. As always, we love having you share your amazing skills with us. And we invite any of our amazing viewers to share your happy pocketbooks and what you've done. Um, tag us at, at SF Public Library and use the hashtag, hashtag SFPL make and do. We'd love to be able to see what you made today. We had a lot of people on view today. And as always, you can view this again and share it with your friends on our YouTube page. So check us out. And we hope to be able to see you next Monday for our final live workshop, Slinky books. That sounds very intriguing. I'm very excited to find out what Caterpillar books are all about. And I know everyone else is too. So be sure to check out um, our friends at Book Arts Roadshow on their Instagram. And just that's all folks. Take care and be safe. And we look forward to seeing you next week or whenever the next time we can see you is. Bye. Bye. See you Bye. next time.